So with the Acolyte being fully cancelled, lots of people are like, cool, what's the next big Star Wars thing? You know, with Ahsoka Season 2 probably going to happen, Andor Season 2 probably going to happen, the Mandalorian Grogu probably going to happen. What are some other things that, that can be used to make Star Wars media? Ironically, had Disney not jettisoned the majority of the expanded universe, there's a ton of things there which they keep on pulling from every now and then. Thank you, Thrawn. So I just finished listening to uh, Star Wars Scoundrels on Audible. Theme it kind of like an Ocean's Eleven sort of thing, but with, you know, Han Solo, Lando, Chewbacca, and a bunch of other characters. And I was like, I'm listening to him going, you know, we keep on going, there's no good Star Wars. There is, there's, there's tons of books that were written. And you could probably take things from that, and you could do a, a multi-layered scoundrel. There's a breaking and entering, there's, there's, there's traps, there's, you know, evasion, there's car chases, there's, you know, there's shootouts. There's enough in it to make you go, this would be a really good, you know, probably, it might be longer for a movie, but it would be a really good series. Oh, and Skeleton Gears too, which is pretty good. I'm currently listening to I, Jedi. Which is, is Luke kind of having a, a small academy. And hearing him talk with some students and all that, we needed this Luke in the, pre, in the sequel trilogy. Because it's really well thought out. And I'm like, again, there's those sorts of things. If you want to do an anthology series, uh, The Perfect Weapon. Which is a setup for The Force Awakens. Which is pretty much just, remember in uh, Maz Kanata's castle or palace there is a woman who had like really uh, like jet black fingers it's a story that's just her I think it was a Delilah S. Dawson one who you know just tap her for things or her rise of the red blade which is an inquisitor story is a fantastic look at what inquisitor life was like which you know, we don't do a lot with the dark side and the empire I listened to that and I was like, oh man, I got jazzed with the Acolyte, then the Acolyte happened and it was nowhere near as good as a story that someone wrote that has enough memory. It's like, oh, and here they're facing against Darth Vader. Okay. It has enough of those things where you kind of go, this, this, this could work live action. You already have costume design songs with the Inquisitors and Obi-Wan. You already have lightsaber models and again, Obi-Wan. You know, there's, there's lots of great information that exists. There's lots of great writers. Just take someone who can, can pass this real quick test. Number one, do you know why the IP is popular? Number two, have you read anything from the IP or watched anything from it? That way we don't have, oh, have some spice creams. Spice is a commonly used reference for the drugs that get smuggled along. So, while spice creams sounded neat and interesting, in a lot of Star Wars areas, spice creams would almost be drug creams. Just, just throwing that out there. Don't be super excited to be like, oh, we picked this really fringe thing for this. No. Everything so far for Skeleton Crew has been like, hey, look, this is kind of like Goonies, coming of age sort of thing but set in Star Wars. People go, okay. Trailer comes out. It's always, it's strange thing in Star Wars. Cool. It's pretty close to Goonies. But people are like, okay, this, this makes sense. It's easy to understand. Don't be like, well, it's Kill Bill meets Frozen. Yeah, that, that brings a lot of really big, specific ideas that are hard to correlate together and to have make sense. Instead, you're like, I'm going to pick two really popular IPs and be like, it's like that. No, don't. So those are things I get. Do you understand why the IP is important? Are you a fan of the IP? You know, those are pretty, some pretty, pretty big, bold things to put in there. Why was a lot of the MCU in the beginning very successful? Well, they picked people who enjoyed the source material and who wanted to see what they read on a big screen. Sam Raimi Spider-Man films. Look at one, two, and then look at three. One and two were things that he wanted to do. Three was a studio going, well, we need to put in Venom. I don't know how to put in Venom. 
I don't want to put in Venom. Put in Venom. Isn't Venom cool? It's like, no. It's, somebody went through a, who's in a, who's, iconic character from Spider-Man, Venom. You gotta put in Venom. No, I don't want to put in Venom. Put in Venom. You know, there's, there's enough cool things to do in Star Wars. You know, it's not like someone wants to back and go, oh, man, it's how I do. It's how I think, you know, Jedi Survivor. Be like, hey, we actually have a person who we used to make the character. Yeah, I want to do that. But Cal Kestis, there's an actual person, and he appears to be a fan of, of, of the source material. And he actually is the model that we used. Why not tap him and take some things from the video game and be like, all right, what are the things we can do live action? Again, you have a lot of the props. You have a lot of things already generated. You don't need to make something brand new. You kind of take what we already kind of have and tweak it a little bit here and there. I mean, we didn't see a bunch of new, you know, ship designs when it came to the Mandalorian. So people were like, all right, they want to see Slave 1? Here's Slave 1. TIE Fighters? TIE Fighters. Same with Andor. We didn't see a ton of entirely brand new ships because it's like, well, this is in this era. Here's the design. Boom, 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 boom. Figure out really early on, is this a movie? If it's a movie, this is a hundred minute movie, this is an hour, this, yeah, it's, it's hour and 40. This is a two hour movie. It's a two and a half hour movie. But this is a TV series. Okay, how long is this TV series? If it's, if it's a three hour one, make it six episodes. Don't, don't make really short, like 20 minute episodes. Because by the time the story really gets going, the, it's done. And, you know, if you want to do things that are more out there and more unique, it's almost like you had this series called Star Wars Visions, where you got to do things taking the Star Wars canvas and throw your own paint on it and do whatever you want to do. And if it doesn't work, it's fine. It's, it's, a, it's an eight-minute animated thing. It didn't cost almost as much as Deadpool and Wolverine. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And if it works, awesome. Like, I personally really loved Star Wars Vision Ronin. I, and the audible of it is really well done too. I was like, man, if they just did this as a long grand made form, that'd be fantastic. And again, the style already exists. This is expanding upon what you already have for a base layer, which is fine. So, I mean, there's lots of cool things they can do with Star Wars. They can take lots of pre-existing ideas, which means they kind of have done to some of, of, of success. Take some of those things, expand upon them, or take some of those things and you just do a one for one conversion. There's plenty of really well done Star Wars media that exists. You can just take that and go, okay, let's let's take some of this and let's do a live action thing with it. Or let's see what we have here, let's do an animated thing with it. Disney has all these avenues they can use. Does it need to be a movie? No. Can it be a TV show? Sure. Does it need to be live action? Does it need to be, it can be animated? Does it need to be four hours of TV? No. Be three hours of TV? Sure. There's so many options and avenues. And there's so many things that already exist that you can just pluck from. That you can make, again, some solid content. Why? Because people are already fans of the books. In between the classic trilogy and the prequel trilogy, you had the books. You had games. That was it. So this large fandom of people who actually enjoyed the movies began to write stories. Take people who are fans of the source material, take some of their stories, take some of their input. Find people who actually like the thing that they're working on. Try to give more of, of a timeless quality to it. And this is a big thing, don't, don't pre-attack your fans. Nor if you pre-attack the fan base, it more or less tells me that your story probably isn't very good. But you're pre-attacking, so that way then when they know backlash happens, you can be like, well, I told you all in the, in the, in the, or before it came out that you're all that you're all current thingists. It's like, no, if if you're trying to find a brand new fan base, hey, that's awesome. If the new fan base doesn't show up, hey, don't blame the existing fan base that you told to go away because the show wasn't made for them. Just some random car thoughts.